Being too weak to suppress an insurrection, I resolved upon adopting a measure that promised to restore the tranquillity of the city without subjecting the Praetorium to humiliating concession. I wrote to Jesus requesting an interview with him at the Praetorium. He came. You know that in my veins flows the Spanish mixed with Ionian blood, as incapable of fear as it is of weak emotion. When the Nazarene made his appearance, I was walking in my basilic, and my feet seemed fastened with an iron hand to the marble pavement, and I trembled in every limb as does a guilty culprit, though the Nazarene was as calm as innocence itself. When he came up to me, he stopped, and by a signal sign he seemed to say to me, I am here, though he spoke not a word. For some time I contemplated with admiration and awe this extraordinary type of man, a type of man unknown to our numerous painters, who have given form and figure to all the gods and the heroes. There was nothing about him that was repelling in its character, yet I felt too awed and tremulous to approach him. Jesus said I unto him at last, and my tongue faltered. Jesus of Nazareth, For the last three years I have granted you ample freedom of speech, nor do I regret it. Your words are those of a sage. I know not whether you have read Socrates or Plato, but this I know. There is in your discourses a majestic simplicity that elevates you far above those philosophers. The emperor is informed of it, and I, his humble representative in this country, am glad of having allowed you that liberty of which you are so worthy. However, I must not conceal from you that your discourses have raised up against you powerful and inveterate enemies. Nor is this surprising. Socrates had his enemies, and he fell a victim to their hatred. Yours are doubly incensed against you on account of your discourses being so severe upon their conduct, against me on account of the liberty I have afforded you. They even accuse me of being indirectly leagued with you for the purpose of depriving the Hebrews of the little civil power which Rome has left them. My request, I do not say my order is, that you be more circumspect and moderate in your discourses in the future, and more considerate of them, lest you arise the pride of your enemies, and they raise against you the stupid populace, and compel me to employ the instruments of law. The Nazarene calmly replied, Prince of the earth, your words proceed not from true wisdom. Say to the torrent to stop in the midst of the mountain gorge. It will uproot the trees of the valley. The torrent will answer you that it obeys the laws of nature and the creator. God alone knows whither flow the waters of the torrent. Verily I say unto you, before the rose of Sharon blossoms, the blood of the just shall be spilt. Your blood shall not be spilt, said I, with deep emotion. You are more precious in my estimation on account of your wisdom than all the turbulent and proud Pharisees who abused the freedom granted them by the Romans. They conspire against Caesar and convert his bounty into fear, impressing the unlearned that Caesar is a tyrant and seeks their ruin. Insolent wretches! They are not aware that the wolf of the Tiber sometimes clothes himself with the skin of the sheep to accomplish his wicked designs. I will protect you against them. My praetorium shall be an asylum, sacred both day and night. Jesus carelessly shook his head and said with a grave and divine smile, When the day shall have come, there will be no asylums for the Son of Man, neither in the earth nor under the earth. The asylum of the just is there, pointing to the heavens. That which is written in the books of the prophets must be accomplished. Young man, I answered mildly, if you will oblige me to convert my request into an order. The safety of the province, which has been confided to my care, requires it. You must observe more moderation in your discourses. Do not infringe my order. You know the consequences. May happiness attend you. Farewell. Prince of the earth, replied Jesus. I come not to bring war into the world, but peace, love, and charity. I was born the same day on which Augustus Caesar gave peace to the Roman world. 
Persecutions proceed not from me. I expect it from others. I will meet it in obedience to the will of my Father, who has shown me the way. Restrain, therefore, your worldly prudence. It is not in your power to arrest a victim at the foot of the tabernacle of expiation. So saying, he disappeared like a bright shadow behind the curtains of the basilic, to my great relief. For I felt a heavy burden on me, of which I could not relieve myself while in his presence.